I don't think so, because um, I think you know there's this other uh, old-fashioned tool that can uh, help us know who needs to have a sleep study, and that is called, wait for it, a history and physical examination. I think that physicians need to have the concept of sleep apnea in their minds, and they need to know what the questions to ask are, which is, ha have you been told that you stop breathing during sleep? Are you sleepy during the day? Uh, do you have blood pressure that's difficult to control? Have you fallen asleep while driving? Uh, and then look at some physical measures, particularly crowded airway, maybe a short mandible, maybe a big neck, maybe a, a, a body mass index over 35. But uh, uh, routine testing for sleep apnea, I don't think we're there yet. Although I will say with home sleep testing, which is clearly the way to go, um, which is relatively inexpensive and inobtrusive, it's much easier easier and much more cost effective to look for sleep apnea than ever before. In my opinion, they are at least as effective. And there are good randomized control trials. Now, we don't have really long-term data. And, and physicians, we want long-term data. But the, the data that we do have from at least three credible randomized controlled trials indicates that the data uh, and the outcomes from home testing are uh, as good as in-lab testing.